Hi guys, this is Majestic Gaming here, and I'm here today to bring you another daily guide on auto chess. So, as you have seen my video yesterday, if you haven't, please check it out. I have made a late game guide focused on the late game, and today we'll be making an early game guide focusing on three different replays on the early game. And after three replays, I'll show you a bonus clip which will show you something special as well. So, let's get into it. As you can see, this is the game. I'm gonna reduce the sound. This is the game that we're looking at yesterday. We were looking at yesterday. The first game is the one we were quite dominating in the first stage, and which will continue to be dominating. This is this is respective to the first game of the late game yesterday. So, in case when you want a complete picture, once you can see the late game, early game, and mid game, you actually get a whole game out of out of it. So what we're going to happen is we started off with three clockwork, which is a very good row. I'm going to fast forward a little bit, and because it's the early game, I'll well, focus on decision making in the early game. Of course, we're picking our goblins, and we're very lucky with this row. I mean, Timber and uh, Bounty Hunter on the third row is just incredible. Now on the fourth row, we didn't get anything. I'm going to buy an anti mage. What I always do is that I roll on this particular row. There are several reasons why I do this, but to not overlap with my other to not overlap with my other guides, the reason I do this is because at level three we have the highest one star rate. That's the key. We have the highest two star rate for us as well. I mean the two star rate is gonna stay the same for level four and level five. It's the one star rate we really want because we're trying to hit as many of the units we want as early as possible. Now, there's a little dilemma right here. I think you might have seen that. The dilemma is I got two anti mage and I got one timber saw. So that means I really want the timber saw, I really want the anti mage. I can't have both if I lock it. Now I'm gonna pause here. The reason I'm not locking it, I'll keep it. The reason I'm not locking it is because every role for goblin player or any other player in the early game is so crucial. Unless it's such a role that you can't refuse, I usually don't lock in the early game. Unless it's two beast master and I already have a beast master. Or like unless it's two timber and yeah, usually I lock for two timber. So as you have seen my tier list, which I'll update this week very soon with the new units, is that my top tier units are still Bounty Hunter and Anti Mage. That's why upon winning this round, I really want to buy this, this Anti Mage. And you will see the reason as we go through this game. And some of you might have remembered the game from yesterday, so you might have guessed our account for this game as well. So, we saw the Abaddon. The reason to have the Abaddon is simply because... No, no problem. The reason to have the Abaddon was because there's a chance of getting undead with Abaddon. And this is before the new patch where Undead was nerfed a little bit to I think minus four armor instead of five armor. I'm still a big fan of anti mage because two things anti mage bursts the mana so it locks down a unit and, and it does additional damage instead of physical damage when mana is burned. And also anti mage counters demons. As you can see, half of the players I'm going to be meeting have demons. I'm going to skip a little bit simply because our two star clockwork and two timber we're pretty unstoppable in this stage of the game. It's the rolling and the decision making I want to show you guys right now. Now, most players will be having four units at this round, our fifth round. On the sixth round, most players will be having most players will be having five units because they would have leveled up. Now, as for me, well, as for me in particular with my goblin guide, I have explained in pretty good detail is the reason we're staying on level four is because it has the highest rate of getting us the you know we wanted which is the one star unit what we're doing here is we want to get as many as the one one cost unit to to two star as we can so once we hit level five and level six our board is filled with two star units instead of just the melee one star unit so our board is usually filled with two cost and one cost units that became two star so a power spike actually really hits here after round 10. But sometimes, like good game like this one, we actually are able to maintain our win streak simply because the clockwork is one of the top tier units as well. He's not on the S tier for me simply because he has limitations. And one of the limitations being he doesn't get mana as fast and he needs to verse single units, not multiple units, for his battery assault to really take effect. Now, I'm buying each of the single units 
as you can see, I bought the task there to increase my chance of finding another one star that I want, not a one star I don't want. So hey, I saw the task again and I rolled again. Now you might be wondering, hey, you got lucky with the timber saw. Yes, I did get lucky with the timber saw, but I knew that at that stage of the game, see, I'm not even using the anti mage, but I think I should be placing the shadow fame, but I think for this particular game, I value the shadow fame too high. Now that I looked around this demon, so I was like, ah, I should be using the shadow fame. I shouldn't, shouldn't be using the shadow fame, she used the anti mage and his two star, of course. So the reason I didn't level up was because I wanted to enjoy the high rates for one star. And the rates for two star doesn't change between level four and level five, but the rates for one star really change, goes lower. So a lot of my units I want are one star. Only a few is two star, and that's why I really wanted to stay on level four. And also I knew having the timber this early in the game, I'm guaranteed a win even with only four units. Here we found it as an anti mage. Being a big fan of anti-mage, I didn't pick the anti-mage, which is very unfortunate over here. But the idea was, I think in my mind was, I was like, hey, one, one two-star anti-mage is enough. I don't need more anti-mage. And it just happens we see two more anti-mages over here. So the plan is, if we win, we sell the enchantress, we buy the two anti-mage. And this was a risky round because I could be leveling up on this round, but I really wanted to check in on the clockwork. Because I'm five clockworking, I only need a few more clockwork, I only need four more clockwork to have my three star clockwork. See so here, I saw I'm gonna win, I'm in preparation of buying the anti mages. So it didn't occur to me that I could be making a three star anti mage simply because goblins don't synergize as so well with anti mage after round 15 and especially after round 20. So two things is happening. I wrote again because I knew I needed. A pair of clockwork but we didn't get any now what we really needed see so there's two things that we actually needed and i think i'm forced to lock so let me try to explain the logic behind this one those want the decision making i would recommend sometimes because i don't wish to recommend rolling at level five but the reason i rolled at level five is i really wanted to boost this bounty hunter he is my weakest link and at the moment i felt that the shuttle thing itself is strong enough he actually valued over a two-star anti mage but this was uh i think this was a gameplay that's about two maybe not two weeks maybe about a week ago so that's when the matter was still very focused on the demons and i felt that one anti mage was necessary if i were to play the game now i would take out the shadow thing and have two two-star anti mage at this round but that's something different and during that replay, I was still a big fan of Shadow Thing. Now I'm more inclined to have different units. For this particular game, I have been rolling multiple times. Yes, and each of those I have been getting especially lucky with a few. And here, as you can see, I sold the Tinker despite the fact we're going for a Goblin build because I knew I wanted the spare change. I, I valued Beastmaster so much here, I sold the Tinker instead of the Beastmaster which is a personal preference by me because I feel like even the Tinker gets the 2 star I won't be able to place the Tinker on the field anymore this is past round 10 and Tinker's use is useless unless Tinker is 3 star and <clears throat> I know in the future if I get 1 Tinker it's enough for my 6 Goblins this is before the Alchemist patch so Alchemist still does SS3 and he's a great unit at this point and very soon I'll be showing you guys some other replays that we have played today and yesterday for the, on the stream. We have seen a really nice Alchemist even after the patch, which I think I'm surprised that maybe you're surprised some of you seeing an Alchemist. So getting back to the game, right now we have a winning streak. Two reasons why. One is we have anti-mage. Well, we did get more anti-mages and we got a bounty hunter, which is excellent. Two reasons why we're winning. One is we have a two-star timber so one is that we have anti-mage and also alchemist so surprisingly enough our fire units on the board is surprisingly strong what i would change if i can go back now is to change the shadow thing with anti-mage but i think both are different preference so here i changed the shadow thing out i felt i need someone to take out the back line and although those are small decision makings in the early game i have some of the strongest four or five units i can place down and here i'm versing people with four or five or six units and we're still winning simply because as you can see 
one star anti mage, one star Luna, just doesn't cut it. Even the trade protector being two star unit, it's 1.5 star for me. And they just can't do much. And the task is falling off, falling low as well in terms of power spike. So here, I'm rolling again. And I think we all know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a shadow thing. I'm looking for anti mage. But before I rolled here, I had a plan. The plan was if I don't get anything, I need to level to level 6 now because I want to keep my winning streak. The reason I can afford to be rolling this hard was for the winning streak. I am currently on a winning streak of 3 gold. And what I want to show you is this position in particular. I placed the clock in the back line for a particular reason. is to stop the assassins from hitting this butter thing. I was like, I can't shut up in butter thing because he's so squishy at level 1. Only 450 health. And as you can see, Assassin players comes in. We have two units waiting in the back line protecting the shadow thing. Oh, he didn't really need protecting his got nanobot armor, but still. We had units ready for the assassins. I think that's a part of the placement I really like about my early game placement. And I think sometimes this do fall off after round 15, but before that it's really useful. If you have a spare two star that you can protect your back line. So here we wrote again. The reason I wrote again was two again. I wanted the Shadow Fiend upgrade, I wanted the Clockwork, and I wanted the Anti Mage. And we wrote again over here. What's happening right now is I know I'm strong. I know everyone's saving. So this is thinking like on top of the matter. It's like thinking next level on the matter. I know everyone is forced to save because everyone knows if they don't save now, they'll be lower economy. I know I'm strong already. If I just push a little stronger, I guarantee this win streak. That basically represents 30 gold of saving for me because I'm only 3 gold around. And it's as if I have 30 gold right now in my bank. And if I keep winning for the next 5 rounds, I make 15 gold out of that. Not only do I win, I protect my health, I make gold from victory round, and I make gold from the saving. So in, in fact, I'm actually making 4 gold just by winning each round at this point. And this is great. And I can afford to not be saving that early. I can afford to be saving at round 14 simply because I'm strong and I'm, I'm on winning streak. So this is the first type of the early game I want to introduce is that to stay on top of the winning streak. Two methods to do that. One is using go to row. One is using go to level up. I do not recommend level up beyond level 7. So level 7 is the highest level I will push if you are on winning streak. You want to push for levels. And... Yeah, you can stay on level 6 and rolling, you can stay on level 7 and rolling, but I do recommend to be saving after round 15, because despite the fact you are strong and you're on top with good rolls or whatever units, despite that, you can get off chance a random RNG of a human silence, a random conquer boat, or a random Medusa can wipe you down. So you really want to be saving after round 15. And that's the idea. And now, seeing this early game, we're quite strong. What I'm going to show you guys as the last part is we found a clockwork at round 15 and knowing that round 15 is the neutral round I think my position is still fine because the clockwork and the bounty were there to protect Shadowfin from assassins and this round itself is the assassin round so we had a we didn't even need to swap because our positioning was so suitable for the assassins so what I'm going to show you guys yeah the last thing I want to show you guys for this particular replay is that round 16 we found our anti mages. It's because we saved the spot for him and we were very lucky with anti mage rolls in the early game. Two reasons we got anti mage here. I'm gonna pause here. And one is that we rolled multiple times when everyone is saving, and those rolls really scrolled us the units we wanted, and we had the option to take a few other units while we're rolling. And one of the units I wanted to take was anti mage. So after rolling a turn out 20 times in the early round, I found multiple anti mages. That's what secured me the spot of having a three star anti mage. Yes, there were some lucky rolls, but still, if I didn't roll that much in the early game, I wouldn't have found this anti mage. And this really secured the early game for me in this particular game. And I'll leave the middle part of this replay for tomorrow to show you guys the mid game. Now, what we're looking at here is also respectively to the replay of yesterday's upload of the late game replays upload if you remember correctly i'll just remind you guys the first game we were on dominating streak the second game we actually when we saw the late game of the second game yesterday we were actually on the third last position we were on really low health about 40 percent we had to climb back really desperately 
and that's one of the replay of us coming back us playing from behind i wanted to show you guys so yeah we did get into the late game playing from behind but what actually happened in the, in the early game did anything happen in the early game that resulted of this or did we make any mistake in the early game let's have a look so round two to bounty hunt very standard nothing too special here i'm just checking a few things I'm getting Enchantress simply because I think she's value for gold. We got three goblins, round three. I think our average is acceptable, but we could be better. So yeah, we're fighting a few units, getting nothing really special. Here we found a Timber at the start of the round and, uh, and a Tinker, which is very nice. Again, I'll be rolling. See, I got my units back and I'll be rolling. And simply because it's one row, we found a two star. Bounty Hunter. I think this really secures us the victory for the this round. I think most people will find a goblin with any two stars very strong in round four. And yes, we do win this round convincingly. Oh, the slider made us work for a bit, you know. Again, we got some very nice rows at the start of the round. So we got another two star. So I'm feeling really confident right now. Why am I feeling really confident? On top of that, you see, let me show you what exactly happened here. Why I'm feeling really confident, I'm leaving a lot of pairs over here. So if we roll, we roll into an ogre, I can sell the enchantress. If I roll into something else, I can sell the ogre's bird. So here I rolled, I rolled into the enchantress. So what is in my mind is I want to win the early game. To win the early game, I don't care if I lose one gold on the enchantress by making enchantress two star, because I know a two star enchantress before around five or six it's just so much healing and so strong with this thing so i want the units that will guarantee me to win the early game that's my entire game plan i'm gonna be winning the early game and starting our first winning streak here i sold the enchantress because i no longer need the enchantress i felt two timbers are enough in terms of aoe damage in terms of sustain compared to enchantress and i want a spare gold in case I want to access the Beastmaster because the Orcs were quite great before the nerf. Well, they're still great, but just a little bit less health. So, here the two Timber plus the two Star Tinker and the Bounty Hunter really secures the game despite the fact people can have five or six units at this stage of the game. So, you can see I am still rolling and I'm still rolling for the units I want, which is Anti Mage, Beastmaster, and all the Goblins. And as of now, after I think this replay was also about a week old, as of now, I'm also open to Queen of Pain. I'm also open. Yeah, I'm out of gold because I know I can't buy Beastmaster and Clock at the same time, and that's the time I'll be locking it in. As of now, I think I open up to Queen of Pain and Razors, and I'm skeptical on Shadowfin because so many people run Anti Mage now. Previously, I think, previous to this week, not as many people run anti mage as I did, but with the new elf matter and with the whole, you know, elf is so great, everyone runs anti mage for early game dominance and for late game. And this is the first round actually we lost. We lost at round seven, and that didn't really go well with our plan because our whole plan revolved around winning the early game to get enough winning gold to go further. So, despite the fact I lost, I'm kind of stuck because I didn't get the early winning streak and I didn't get the pairs I needed. But the good thing is I have so much potential over here. Look how many pairs I have. I have one, two, three, four pairs. And all of those pairs come very easily because it's one star and two star. And level five have the highest rates for them. I didn't roll this round because I'm worried that if I rolled and I get units, I have forced luck again. What I want is if I win the round, maybe I'll roll. Let's have a look at the round. I'm skipping quickly because I know I'll win the round because we have some of the strongest units. Let's have a look over here. So let me show you what happened over here. Yeah, I think I skipped it further. So what I hear is I saw that I'm going to win and I'm going to pause here. Knowing that I'm going to win, that means currently I have two gold. If I spend the two gold, I'm left with zero gold. Even if I sell the Enchantress, if I got a tin, uh, Timber or a Beastmaster, I can't buy them. But knowing I'm going to win, I have two gold, one gold, and one gold from victory. I have four gold. That means I have two gold spare. That means I can buy the Timber or the Beastmaster if it appears. 
which they didn't, which is fine. And again, sitting on too many pairs is forcing me to roll. I wouldn't recommend this rolling at round 5 now because a bit of my mindset is, has changed because of that. But sometimes sitting on 4 pairs, it is a good choice to be rolling because it's so likely you hit one of your pairs or you hit something else you might need, say a shadow thing, say a purple unit, say an alchemist, say a long druid, because your range of units you want is so much wider. And I think rolling and not hitting is going to help me very soon, simply because yeah, here we found that there's a bounty hunter, simply because if we roll and we don't hit, it really impacts on our strategy. Here, what I was rolling, was a timber but because i didn't get a timber i got a clockwork so i'll be taking back the timbers and keeping all the two star units notice how at round 10 that's where i usually feel the spikes coming i also missed place but i was a little delayed because of the lag with the 330 ping but yeah round 10 i think we're even won this one with only four units because we're really strong two stars what I want to say is, oh yeah, this round I found a Lung Jew, but it's not that critical. What I want to say is, after round 10, I usually start with 3, 4, 5 2 star units. And that's what really pushes us to be in a good economical spot from round 11 to round 15 or even 15 to 20. So it pushes us into the late game with a good economic spot, because we know we'll be falling off soon. So here I'm going to skip a little bit because we have some of the stronger two stars and we even have a laundry swapped up. So we're quite strong. And this is the first time we actually start to make, we start to win. I made a mistake here, as you, you would have seen. I should have put the enchantress down and made extra gold and then, then leveled up. But to share with you guys something funny was a friend of mine said this would increase the pool of enchantress. It would increase my enchantress pool if I did the two for one trade. So two enchantress and sell it for three gold. It actually created enchantress out of nothing. So it's actually diluting my pool of one star units slightly. But I'm not sure if that's confirmed. Here we're finding a few people and we're collecting random units to increase our chance of finding one star. Timber Soul is a really good hit. And personal preference with Timber Soul is that Timber always is better than Tinker. And Timber is one of the best units I'll keep as the Goblins. Not only it's 2 star, it's got great AoE and low CD. And despite the nerf to Timber Summer, he's still very tanky. And a change of preference compared to now is that I'll always keep the Disruptor compared to the Doom. I feel 2 star Disruptor is so much stronger. I knew that the anti mage would be falling off soon, so I was in preference of a Doom. And if I were playing now, I think I'll keep the Disruptor and leave the anti mage on the board for a few more turns to really cash in his potential. Here, white fighting zone, I think the Doom really paid off by Dooming a particular target and really does some good damage even at level 1 for the Doom. Here, I'm showing that you guys will have a winning streak of 3 gold again, even though we lost the winning streak. After round, so this is my position for round 15. So the tank is in the corner. The guys who wants to do damage or who wants to stay alive is over here. The assassins could be anywhere. The off tank is probably over here or here. So as you can see, usually the tank gets focused by two and only two. And the off tanks probably take one or two. And here the tank died, but we got enough value out of it. And notice how I have been saving after getting to level 6 and I have been saving pretty much right after level 10 because I already have my 2 star units there's no need to be rolling, no need to be leveling I just sit on my 2 star units and save as much as I can and this is going to be the theme of this early game till the end of this early game stage so why I show you the early game stage to end is when we got to 50 gold and here we lost the winning streak again simply because those knights and hawks and warriors is so strong and despite that fact, we're still saving. We're taking units we want and we're saving. Because we know we're going to fall in off still. No way we can roll into a 3 star. So unlikely. But what we can do is, we can save to 50 gold. And you know, slowly we're losing almost every round against people. But it's okay. Losing streak, winning streak, it's all acceptable. 
because we've banked on so much HP, even losing here, we still are slightly on the top of the list. But very soon we will lose more because we haven't been upgrading our units. Which is a choice I made purposely because I wanted to save more. And yes, you can see we're currently on our losing streak. And what I wanted to show you guys the way I stopped this replay is at this round, round 19. So, after having a quite good of an early game start by rolling into two star units, I start saving from round 10. And from round 10, I did combine some units, and maybe I didn't save exactly at round 10, but I planned to save after round 10. And when I started saving, it took me about 7 or 8 rounds, let me go back here. To get to round 19, where I am firmly on 50 gold, which is where the spot I want to be going to. And afterwards, what I plan to do is to go to level 8 and start rolling for some units, get stronger, and we'll watch, uh, we'll, we'll watch the mid game tomorrow on this particular replay as well. What I want to show you guys is over here, I have zero gold, I have one gold on round 11. What I really started saving is after round 12, so starting from round 13 to round 19. So six rounds I saved for 50 gold and that was the gold I very much needed to go into mid game and late game as a goblin. Hey guys, this is the third replay we'll be showing you guys and on this replay, it's the same replay that we saw yesterday where the same replay yesterday was a very close game between several players and today we're going to see the early game of that particular replay. We started with a goblin and usually we start with a goblin and I'll probably go with a goblin if I get a few more goblins. Here we got another bounty hunter in round two. And another tinker. Another timber and tinker at round three. So we starting pretty well. Nothing too fancy, but pretty nice start for me actually. Not many good items. So yeah, this is the round I want to show you guys. I feel round four is really important. For us goblin players, that is. What I'm sitting on is two bounty hunter, two tinker, one beastmaster, which is my favorite. I always keep as the wine. I want to get two star and one timber. What I can do is, I can sit down where I am, or I can level up. No, not level up. What I meant is, I can sit down where I am, or I can roll once. Here, I didn't feel the necessity to roll, but I know I might be losing this round. Let's have a look at this round. Yeah, I'm just buying the Shadow Shamans for the efficiency sake and also for the sake of the fact if I can as a 2 star Shadow Shaman, I'll still use it for one round or two. We run this round because of the perfect positioning of the Tinker and the Nanobot buff. Notice I always position my Tinker as a tank. On the off chance, one in three chance he becomes a tank, he will be tanking. Otherwise, if he's somewhere over here, he's not going to be tanking. Only at the front, he'll be tanking. This round, Shadow Thing and Beastmaster. I feel that the strongest unit will be the Shadow Thing. Let me see. The downside is currently I don't have any two star. And if I were to play this three play right now, if I were to play that game, I don't know, I might sell the train protector and try to roll for a one star. But the personal preference is that I was worried if I rolled into a one a two star, I don't have the gold to, to buy it. If I don't have the gold to buy it, that means I have to lock, and I really don't want to lock in an early game. You lose so much when locking, and luckily enough, the warriors and they don't do much damage. And we're going to octane them with our nanobot, and Shadowfin is going to do great damage. Let me try this round. So here I'm buying the Morphling for the sake of reducing two stars, so I can higher chance of getting a beast mount and higher chance of getting a timber. Very slightly. So. Let's have a look over here. Over here. Sorry. So we found a clockwork. And what's happening is I have so many pairs I'm actually rolling pretty hard, simply trying to match off the pairs because I wanted to keep my winning streak. But if I don't have any more units to sell, I know if I sell the morphling, I still don't have any units to sell. I'm not gonna keep going. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> this other guy's blast by RNG. Well, I have the perfect pair hand, almost to a full house. That is, and yes, as, as I knew it, I'm going to be losing here simply because we didn't hit any of our pairs. We rolled for it, we didn't get any. 
And let me show you the next round. This always happens when I lose, is that we hit our pairs so hard that we spike so hard back to the game. Which is fine. This is what my goblin strategy is planning to do. It's so that despite the fact you might lose a round, you always spike because of the early game units you have rolled into. So as you can see, the bounty hunter is positioned here to guard the shadow thing from the assassin. But then I decide this is better guard if I do it this way. And I'm gonna lose this round simply because it's a two star timber. And we won't watch the terrible fight where the assassin just crits us and just kills us. And again over here. So let me show you the starting of this round. We found our timber because we have been rolling before to get two timbers and when we match the timber we hit and there's a spike and each of those mini power spikes really enable us to go into the mid game and when I said mid game I mean round 10 to round 20 to be saving I leveled up here as a principle of precedence because here I know I'm stronger I want to be even stronger to start a win streak because I know very soon after round 10 I really want my win streaks and I know regardless if I level up or not over here so we are on 3 over 4 XP. If we level here, we have 5 minutes on the board. If I don't level, I only have 4. But next round, regardless, we'll be on level 5. So why don't I go to level 5 now instead of waiting for the next round and having one less unit when I want to win the round. And we'll be fighting and we'll win the round because I think he was running a losing streak. Oh, I'm not sure what Frozo TV was doing over there. And we hit some more units. Nothing too special. And again, I want to show you over here. This is something I also like to do. So previously we were on 3 over 4 XP. After I planned to get a win streak, this is the plan to get a win streak. I leveled to level 5 so I put an additional unit. I know next time I'll be on 3 over 5 by leveling from here. And 3 over 5 will kick me into... F no, sorry. I'll be on 3 over 8 when I go from four, 3 over 4. So going from 3 over 4 puts me 3 over 8 for level 5. And 3 over 8 for level 5 becomes 4 over 8 in the next round. Those are the two rounds I really like to be spiking. And by going into 4 over 8, I can just spend 5 more gold. I'll be 6. I'll be level 6. So over here, I become level 6. I just put another unit down. And because I still have two pairs, I feel confident enough that maybe I'll be getting another pair going to be quite strong and here over here I'll show you the rows we got the Beastmaster pair we're looking for we also got a shadow thing which is actually not row first even though it's round 10 but round 10 is that term that give us the chance of rolling our pairs into a 2 star and as you can see I'm moving into the mid game of moving after round 10 with a solid lineup again with goblins so one of the reasons I really like emphasize how good the goblin builds was post the alchemist nerf that is i'll discuss the alchemist nerf with you guys after so post the alchemist nerf one of the reason uh, before the alchemist nerf that is i feel that goblins are really great simply because they're dominating stance in the early game and our gameplay can really make us even stronger in the early game now let's have a look over here What's going to happen is for round 11, we'll be saving simply because we're only getting the pairs we needed. And after that, you know, we don't need any rows we don't need to level up because as goblins, we need to be level 8 and we need a good economy to get to level 8. As goblins, we already got all the two stars we wanted. So there's no need to be rolling. And here I was lucky enough to find a clockwork. And looking over here, my six units or my seven units, I only have one unit that's not two star. And as a personal preference, I took out the Bounty Hunter because I feel the Tinker is a great tank for the Shadow Thing when everyone jumps out. I don't want all of them to be jumping out, I want something to protect my Shadow Thing. Here we'll be saving. And it isn't that much special when you start saving because you know your lineup is strong on this round. I'm just making what makes do so I get every round I'm on the multiples of 10. I'm saving into the late game. Notice I'm saving earlier because I have hit some of the crucial units earlier compared to the other replay. And we're winning. And because I know I'll be winning with units. So here we know this particular player is the open front player. How? He's a really good open front player. 
and he's well top 10 or top 20 after new new MR came out for the first day simply because he's so good at open front and I'll discuss open front with another guy with you guys why it's so good and what are these potentials and why it's falling down now because so many people are playing Alps and Druids are still in their units so here I'm skipping a little bit because this is a war front what I want to show you guys is for this particular replay when did I hit 50 gold so notice how for this replay, we hit 50 gold at level 16, around 16. What that means is, from this round onwards, most of our gold will be spent towards getting a build up level up to level 8. That's when we first roll a few times for a few crucial units to get a 2 star. Maybe attack is, if we're not lucky, we just go to level 9. I'll show you the big game tomorrow on this particular replay as well. What I want to highlight for those three replays is despite the result in the late game for the three particular replays, all three replays showed us to be quite dominating in the early game as goblin, goblins. And that's what we really need to do as goblins. If we don't dominate the early game and save enough health, we go into the mid game, we're going to be in a world of pain. And tomorrow I'll show you some replays of those three replays where we go into the mid game, a different scenario and different outcome comes due to the units we rolled at this stage of the game. So yeah, we'll keep tuned on that. And I'm really looking forward to tomorrow when we complete this three round series of late game, early game and mid game. And as I said earlier, I'll show you guys a little bonus clip. This is actually the bonus clip. Well, really nice okay, this is a commentated video which I'll be posting with for you guys later. But what I really wanted to show you, so here I'm just gonna speak in blindly. I think my picture overlay this current picture. What I wanted to show you guys quickly is what happened in this game. Let's have a look at round four. We lost round four. So we lost round four and at round 5, we have a clockwork as 2 star, and we rolled once at round 5 to get a 2 star tinker. We put down the anti mage. This is the game we actually play today, actually. We play with the Twitch chat, as you can see, we have the Twitch chat over here. This is the new thing I actually implemented for Twitch as well. So, you know, this is the latest replay we just had. As this bonus game, I won't show you that much because I want to keep this game a surprise for you guys. I want to really edit it well and make a great game for you guys. I just want to, sh to show you the re replay of this early game. I'm going to skip a little bit. There's nothing too special except uh, two critical decision making over here. One is over here. So this critical decision making was that looking at here, currently I'm on one over four XP. Why did I level up here is because I know I'm on winning streak. I want to keep my winning streak by adding just one more unit. Very simple. So I add the Luna and I just go to level 5. Nothing special, but here usually what I used to do is to roll for goblins because I already have two two stars. I feel I can keep my winning streak by leveling up. This does sacrifice my one star, one cost unit rate, but it's acceptable. Another one over here is I'll be skipping a bit. We found the train protector. So what happened over here is when given the chance again. Here we actually lost our winning streak, which actually really thwarted us in terms of having the plan of getting the win streak going and keep going harder. So let's have a look over here. This is after round 10. What's going to happen after round 10 is I'll be saving. Let's see when do we hit 50 gold. From round 10 to round 14, we didn't purchase anything. And we only purchased one thing, which I'll show you. The only thing we purchased, this is the formation for round 14. And the only thing that changed was a two star Queen of Pain. Let me show you. This is round 11. When round 11 started, so round 10, we're already sitting on 10 gold. But we don't have the Queen of Pain merged. So the only thing that changed for us was the Queen of Pain. The moment I got Queen of Pain, I sold the two star train protector and I kept that formation for four rounds. And I know people will be saving for those four rounds. And by doing that, we got to 50 gold at round 14 and we're still staying on top. We only lost once. This shows you guys the importance of AOE units in the early game. This bonus clip shows two Timbersaw, one Queen of Pain and one Conquer will cleave almost any lineup from round 10 to round 15. Most of the time that is. There's rare 
where the rare chances where two injunctions out heals us. But in this particular replay and most other replays, when you have just enough AoE, you actually cleave in the early game. This is very reminiscent of the Ogre, Hawk Mage and other mages because they cleave just enough damage. And for us, those few units just did enough damage. If we count, that's about 300, 300 and 150. So about, I feel about 600 to 800 or 700 is perfect for the AoE cleave damage. And in this bonus replay, we save to 50 gold around 14. So I'm gonna stop the guide for the early game right here. And I'm gonna make a conclusion. The conclusion is, I feel that the goblins, even after the nerf to alchemist and even a slight nerf to techie straight with a new legendary, goblins are still very strong because less people are gonna play goblins simply because of nerf. And more people are gonna play elves and that gives you more chance of finding goblins. And secondly, our strategy of rolling the early games around four is really paying off most of the time. There's only a small chance it doesn't pay off, and most of the time it does pay off, and pay off in the form that we get more two stars, and we start saving around round 10, around 13, and we really get enough savings around round 16 or 17. And with this income, we can really go into the mid game, which I'll discuss tomorrow. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this early game guide. Let me know in the comments below if you think there's a question that's unclear, if there's more things with early game you want to discuss. So yeah, please remember to subscribe and like, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the kind comments you guys have been sending, and I'm really grateful for you guys for coming over to Twitch to say hi to a small and dedicated community. Thank you so much guys, and I'll see you guys next time.